Hello and welcome to Tabletop Oddity. My name is Jay and today we're going to be having a look at an in-depth look at Darth Vader or sort of like how to play as Darth Vader in Star Wars Legion. And um, yeah, so essentially this all stems from Nationals 2018. I went there with Darth Vader, played three, lost three. I was like, ah, oh, that's not particularly great. And then I sort of dedicated myself to getting a little bit better with Darth Vader. And then at the next couple of events, I sort of uh, won two, lost one. And I was like, I lost the last game against somebody who's probably better than I am. And I was like, I understand Vader now. And I wanted to come back. And we'll probably do this for a lot of other um, like characters and, and units, that kind of thing. But I thought we'll come back and we'll have a look at Darth Vader's. We'll have a look at the command cards you should probably take and... Um, and what objectives and conditions suit him and uh, yeah we'll go from there essentially so let's start by looking at him as a whole if I could find my mouse that would be great and um, so I'm just going to do it on tabletop admiral just because it makes things a lot easier Darth Vader he's 200 points naked he's got eight wounds uh, no courage suppression you can't, you can't be uh, suppressed basically he's got red defense dice with no offensive surge or defensive surge and the couple of key things here is what well, deflect is nice if you uh, want to pop your dodge token fine he's immune to pierce like uh, luke is master of the force one can be very important uh, relentless is also very important um, after you perform a move action you may perform a free attack action so by default uh, darth vader does not have a ranged attack so it for me it is almost essential to take saber throw um, on darth vader which essentially lets him use his lightsaber uh, as a ranged weapon at range 1 to 2, uh, you get 3 red dice. Uh, you still include, it still has the impact 3 in the PS3. So um, you can move, move, and then throw your saber. And the movement's important for Darth Vader, it's, it's really his key, like Achilles heel. Uh, he's movement 1. Movement 1, uh, speed 1, I should really say, is pretty slow. Um, there's no getting around that and that is really his essential weakness he can be flanked very easily he can be uh, kept at range very easily because he's only movement one um so for build wise i think you need to take saber throw and um, every single time every list i've ever ran with darth vader has included saber throw uh, personally i will never leave home without it and then the next one i really like false reflexes because darth vader is going to take his time getting up the board False reflexes can keep him alive. False reflexes will let you take a dodge um, for, for free, basically, if you then use Master of the Force to um, get rid of it. Now, it's not at the end of the phase anymore, like the card says. It has actually been changed to be at the end of the activation. So when we get onto Implacable, you can actually recover that. Um, you can recover it again, uh, basically. Ah, ready it again is probably the better phrase. Um, but yeah. False Reflex is fantastic and because he's so slow getting up the board, you want to be taking dodges. Uh, you're, he's so expensive that you might not be able to activate your opponent, so you might get be getting shot at by at least a couple of units uh, and having a dodge is just fantastic. Force Push. Now, Force Push comes down to one of the key principles with, uh, when it comes to Vader and the, whole ga the game as a whole, really, is that you really need to know your ranges and movements. So, uh, movement one it, the actual template itself is three inches right minus this the like curvy bits for the slots so Darth Vader will go from this end three inches and be like three and a bit now you need to know how that translates to the range one ruler because you can't get your movement tools out at any point but you can get the range rule out at any point point. and a standard example of this is like a um, Luke Skywalker with a doing a double move and not a double move and um, well, yeah, double move is essentially just under range two. And that's the kind of stuff you need to keep in mind, especially with Vader when your distance is so important. But the key thing here is that you can move and force push is range one. So you could actually be out of range with a double move, whereas you could be in range with a move, force push, move, and all right, because of Relentless, you get to attack. So force push, um, situational, I understand that, but it's pretty important for Darth Vader. You could also do something like I could charge a unit, but bring in another unit after uh, that unit. So maybe I charge in, I kill most of a, a, a rebel unit, but I'm a bit worried that maybe they'll just withdraw and I'll get shot at next turn. Well, then you might want to pull in another unit. And then you've really got to, they've got to withdraw with two units. That's two activations, not shooting you. You're looking a bit more like 
safe in that uh, in that circumstance. So force push, really useful. Um, keeping what you really want to do is either push people in or out of combat with you, um, or, or within range, which is the best use for it. And um, yeah, that's I, I, that's the build that I've personally been rocking. Um, those three. Now, who accompanies Darth Vader? Like, what do you do along with Darth Vader? Well. Emperor Palpatine is one that a lot of people are throwing around at the minute. I say a lot of people, a handful of people are throwing around at the minute. I personally don't rate it. I think it's too expensive um, for what it does. It's like 400 and odd points. It, I understand having uh, the pulls, pull the strings onto Darth Vader could make him useful, but and apparently this did win a tournament. However, I personally think that's a little bit too expensive. You've got too few units to do other things. I'm not a fan of it, and I probably wouldn't run it. So for me, Palpatine is a temporary no. If it becomes fantastic and I can maybe somebody can see I can see the use of it. But Palpatine's only been out for a month. Um and I'm not prepared to say live on him. But with Fett though, I actually think is a really good accompaniment with Darth Vader. Now the downside to this is again you are actually short on points because but like Bubba Fett's 140 points and Darth Vader's 235 in this build. And now you could maybe whack on stims on Fett and call it a day. Um it's a great accompaniment for a few different reasons. One, Bubba Fett is movement three, which really uh, helps negate Darth Vader's slowness. Like you can cause trouble with uh, Bubba Fett. And um, and Bubba Fett whipcord can keep a unit in place, so it can maybe stop um, a Son of Skywalker coming in. He'd probably it'd be a roll off, but you could stop a Son of Skywalker coming in with whipcord. Um, I just feel like it's a really nice accompaniment. And there is the classic trick you could do of um, new ways to motivate them: take the wound on Bubba, get three actions, and you could maybe like move, claim a box, move away. All kinds of shenanigans you can do there with Vader and Bubba Fett. Um, I think a lot of if you unless you're running Palpatine. I think Boba Fett is a is, should probably be included in the Vader list and the uh, Vias list for now. Um, I just really like that as a compliment to him. And you sort of need to build around Vader. You've got to think that he's going to be slowly marching up the board. Now, you could build snow troopers with him, with the flamer, but then everybody's slow and you can maybe be outran. Are you whacking some DLTs and some um, something like uh, with long range? I was going to say an ATST. An ATST is way too expensive. Um, a speeder bikes you have a problem. the problem with speeder bikes is because they have the compulsory move you can end up being out of position quite quickly um i think i personally keep away from the speeder bikes and go for fet um but you know dlts with range fall nice company with vader as well but so is that range one frag grenades flame trooper uh unit they're pretty decent as well so but that that's how i personally build him and how i personally run him uh, you might disagree with me. So we'll have a look at his command cards. Uh, Master of Evils is 3 pip. So when you're issued uh, an order, he gains a dodge token. Very good if he's in a risky position. Um, you know, maybe you are you you know you're going to have... You, you're activated, so you know you're going to have to put him in a risky position for a turn. You could maybe do that. Maybe take another dodge if you've got false reflexes. Um, uh, Darth, when Darth Vader activates, though, each enemy unit at range 1 to 2 gains 3 suppression tokens. That is, obviously it's very situational, you need to get in within range 1 of 2 of quite a few different um, trooper units and stuff like that, but that can cause absolute chaos at the right time. If your opponent's leader's not near them, you could they can be panicking off the board essentially. Um, and this actually won me a game once, I'd used this in turn 6. Um, the gentleman I was playing, he had a unit, just one unit of troopers um, on intercepts or transmissions, and they ran away from it because I panicked them and uh, and then they ran off it. And without that, I would have lost. They didn't rally, couldn't get back on it. Fantastic. What a great, uh, great day for me. Master of Evil. It's one of those cards where it's like, it's all right. Plus, it's Darth Vader and two units. So it's not two trooper units. So it's actually still pretty versatile. Um, it's like it, from the difference between that and, say, Assault, you're only losing one unit, but it has to be Darth Vader, and then you get in the dodge token. So for me, I pretty much always include Master of Evil. I don't really see the reason uh, not to. New ways to motivate them, especially now with Bubba. As I said, you've got that shenanigan where you can move in, pick up the box, move back, but you do take a wound. Um, and uh, I just think this is pretty all around decent now. Uh, initially, like when the game first came out, I was pretty much never using this. I had no real reason to ever take a wound 
um, and try and get a free act action. Like it didn't make sense. It, the cost effectiveness of that didn't seem to work. But now with these multi wound uh, accompaniments to Vader, like Boba Fett, I actually think no. Does it? Does it like you could even use this with the Royal Guard? And I never actually spoke about the Royal Guard. Let's quickly speak about the Royal Guard. So the Royal Guard, instead of Boba Fett. Um, is an okay accompaniment to Darth Vader, especially with the um, Electro Staff Guard, who is anti Pierce, because one of Darth Vader's main um, like counters, if you will, is Luke Skywalker. And you might be thinking, why? Um, you know, he because he's he's not as good in terms of like how he, how he hits and stuff like that. But the reality is. Uh, you can always get Son of Skywalker off against Darth Vader, which means you're going to charge him with two attacks, with six black dice and then six black dice, um, just because of the movement two as opposed to movement one. And that's going to be a poem for Darth Vader. He's going to take quite a lot of wounds there, um, and nothing really can stop that, especially if they've managed to shoot a few wounds off Vader, then that could be a very quick, dead Darth Vader. Um Darth Vader obviously has implacable guns that in a minute, but the Electro Staff uh, Royal Guard unit, that allows you to have a movement two unit that can take a charge from uh, Luke or possibly do new ways to motivate themselves into Luke, and that's really going to slow him down. I prefer, personally, I prefer Bubba Fett with Whipcord um, to try and keep him on the sidelines kind of thing, keep him where you want him. But the Royal Guard, if you're not going to run Bubba Fett, the Royal Guard with their Electro Staff is also a nice accompaniment to Vader. I personally haven't run that properly yet though, uh, so just keep that in mind. And new ways to motivate them goes well with the Royal Guard, so that's why I'm mentioning it there. Uh, implacable to standard, so you take a wound, Darth Vader himself takes a wound, and you can put your you can put your token back in the activation pool uh, when you've activated him and draw him. Now that does allow you to possibly go twice uh, in a row, <laughs> um, only taking one wound, which would be pretty nice, but that randomness sort of uh, makes this less efficient say than like uh, son of skywalker however implacable if you're in the mix of your enemy um for like main line then implacable can really start just creating absolute chaos uh getting the next turn and with the buff to master of the force where you, it now uh, readies itself after its activation it does mean you could like you could dodge um, and then it'll ready itself, and then you could use Implacable, and then once it's activated again, maybe you get to ready Force Push, and then you could maybe use that again. Well, no, you can probably do Force Push the first time. You know what I mean. You you get to uh, Master of the Forces readying, um, all around pretty da pretty damn decent, really. With um, it's just it's just one of those cards where like you have to take it. Um, taking a wound though can be quite risky. Imagine you've taken five wounds, <laughs> and you're in combat with Luke, and Luke might get to go next. Do you really want to risk? taking another wound um so you only got two wounds left and Luke's going to attack you mm, maybe not or maybe do you want to try and um out, out, like um out pip in the next turn it can be quite it can be quite tricky when to use that um sometimes it's worth not using it but most of the time I always take that second activation and take the wound um because you just want to try and do as much damage and cause as much threat as you can with um Darth Vader so this video is getting a lot longer than I really intended, so I do apologize about that. We'll try and speed it up a little bit. Um, so the main thing when it comes to uh, deployments, objectives, and conditions, for me, is objectives. Uh, sabotage and moisture vaporators, I'm not a huge fan of because um, when it comes to Vader, you really want to try and force the majority of your enemy into one small area. Um, so, so something like key positions, especially if you've got Boba Fett's all right. If it's a key positions, maybe against Luke and you don't have Boba Fett is probably a no-no. But sabotage the vaporators, it's like, well, you're going to possibly be able to manage yours, but then how are you going to threaten your enemy's vaporators? So I'm not necessarily a huge fan of that. Recover the supplies, as I said, it's situationally perfect. Like if they don't have a funky way of getting that quickly, Maybe if they have Luke and you don't have Boba Fett or the Royal Guard, then probably keep away from this. But the good thing about this is it forces that middle objective fight. Um, so you really, that's what you want with Vader and that, that will get it. Key positions now, the way that it's been changed is that the first one um, has to go into the middle. Also, oh, <coughs> excuse me, also pretty decent for Vader because, again, you're forcing... The, a clump in the middle and that's where you need to get vader as quickly as possible intercept and transmissions same kind of thing you can get to the middle one pretty easily then you uh you know you can have a decent fight there downside to that is you 
you are prone to being flanked with Vader, but you're always prone to being flanked with Vader. Breakthrough is the one that I actually probably ditch uh, because getting Vader all the way across is quite difficult. Um, when it comes to deployments, I don't really have any particular like favorites or hatred. I normally ditch the long march personally uh, because that's like range six between the two lines, which is just generally too far. Uh, disarray is fine, really. Advanced position is pretty decent because you get to move. Um, that would be okay. Uh, when it comes to conditions, uh, rapid reinforcements probably not a good one because you're not going to have that many troops, so you probably don't really like want to have somebody out of the battle for the first turn. Minefield is meh, it's okay, I've got no qualms about it. Limited visibility, right, so I never actually spoke about this. If you're running a, uh, Vader and then you decide, well, I'm going to get my activations up with snipers, then limited visibility is sort of both good and bad. Uh, you have to work out against your opponent if it's better for you or worse for you. But essentially, not getting Vader shot as he advances is pretty good. Um, uh, but whereas, like, if you have loads of snipers, then them not shooting is pretty bad. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's completely up to you. Hostile environment, pretty decent for Vader, really, because um, he's not getting suppressed, not worrying about um, panic. So that's all right. Clean conditions, more than fine. So that's the um, the cards, pretty much, and um, that's that's really all I have to say uh, on the conditions. I do, I do have some little notes that I really want to go through, but I'm very aware that this video is very long. So, quick notes. Know your ranges and your movements, like how far you're going to move and that kind of thing. Uh, try and keep Darth Vader hidden as he moves up the board, uh, like out of line of sight, uh, in heavy cover, something like that. It's the Birmingham because he really doesn't want to get shot. The more he gets whittled down, um, the worse he becomes, basically. He's, but you can't keep him just completely hidden on the flank because he'll never get into combat. You need to get him there as quickly as possible. Uh, but as safely as possible. Um, you should pretty much always be double moving with Vader. There's, I, I don't really know why you wouldn't. Uh, you could stand by because he doesn't get um, suppressed. So he, the standby doesn't get knocked off by getting shot at. But keep in mind against something like Luke, uh, a force push will get rid of standby. Uh, so you could... Um, you, you, if, if you can see that coming, if you have stood by against a Luke, then you might want to move and shoot just to get that get make use of your standby. Uh, when it does pop, but I pretty much always double move with Vader. I don't. I don't. There's not many reasons not to. Um, so pretty much always do that. And if you do take false reflexes, don't forget to use false reflexes. Um, it can be a little bit awkward because you're like, I'm gonna take my dodge, then I'm gonna exhaust this card, then I'm gonna ready it straight away because like you, the end of his activation. But um, it's it's worth remembering because it can be vital, especially with the uh, deflect rule that he has. So that's uh, my more in-depth thoughts of Vader. I do apologize for the length of the video. It's one of the longer ones I've ever done. Um, I do apologize for that. <laughs> hopefully it's been okay. Uh, um, hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you want to subscribe, then do uh, consider hitting the subscribe button for more stuff like this. If you like this kind of video, then do let me know. Um, I'll try and keep them a little short, I think, going forward. Um, have a most beautiful day, though. Thank you to all my patrons. I do really appreciate that. Um, have a most beautiful day. And goodbye. Bye, guys.